Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett faced the Senate Judiciary Committee for some tough questions today during the second day of confirmation hearings on Capitol Hill. Barrett was adamant that she had not discussed how she would rule on any cases with the president or with any of his aides. As Natalie Brand reports tonight, she was also asked about Roe versus Wade and the Affordable Care Act. In a long day of questioning before the Senate Judiciary Committee, Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett argued if she is confirmed, her rulings will be based on the law, not her personal opinions. Judges can't just wake up one day and say, I have an agenda, I like guns, I hate guns, I like abortion, I hate abortion, and walk in like a, a royal queen and impose you know, their will on the world. She also sought to separate herself from the late Antonin Scalia, the conservative justice for whom she clerked. I want to be careful to say that if I'm confirmed, you would not be getting Justice Scalia, you would be getting Justice Barrett. But she offered few hints as to how she would rule on key issues. Justice Ginsburg, um, with her characteristic pithiness, used this, way, this to describe um, how a nominee should comport herself at a hearing. No hints, no previews, no forecasts. Still, Democrats pressed her about the current case challenging the Affordable Care Act. I have no hostility to the ACA. They also questioned her about abortion rights. It's inconsistent with the duties of a sitting judge. And therefore, has been the practice of every nominee that sat in the seat before me to take positions on cases that the court has decided in the past. Judge Barrett would not commit to recusing herself from possible election challenges that come before the court, but she also stressed that she's had no conversations with the White House on specific cases. I certainly hope that all members of the committee have more confidence in my integrity than to think that I would allow myself to be used as a pawn to decide this election for the American people. The 22 members of the Judiciary Committee will have another chance to question Judge Barrett on Wednesday. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The Republican-led Judiciary Committee has scheduled a vote on Barrett's nomination for this Thursday with the expectation that Democrats will request a one-week delay. New tonight, a Marine officer has been relieved of command following a deadly accident off the coast of San Clemente Island. You may remember on July 30th, eight Marines and one sailor died when their AAV sank while on the way back from a training exercise. Now, according to the Marine Corps, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Regner was removed from his post today as commanding officer of the landing team due to a loss in trust and confidence. The Marine Corps says the decision was based on substantial information. The investigation into the accident is ongoing. Well, today was definitely a hot one and even hotter than yesterday. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis, we had a record today that was set for Chula Vista as well as back into those triple digits as you're seeing with highs today, 102 El Cajon, 100 for Fallbrook, 101 Valley Center, even 90 for downtown as well as 91 degrees for Oceanside today. And so basically Borrego Springs wasn't the only city that was in those triple digits. 102 was the high today. Taking a look at the record, it was uh, broken today because of Chula Vista's high of 93 degrees. That previous record was set on this day back in 2001. So we're still under that heat advisory. That's going to keep going all the way until Friday night at 5 p.m. Daytime highs for the coast between 85 to 97 degrees, up to 102 for the inland valleys. This obviously is well above seasonal, about 10 to 20 degrees, and we could be in store for a few more records over the next couple of days. We'll go ahead and take a look at your complete forecast coming up. Back to Marcella and Barbara Lee. All right, thanks, Carlene. The election is three weeks from today. Both candidates are on the campaign trail in battleground states. Joe Biden reached out to senior citizens in Florida today, while President Trump rallied in Pennsylvania tonight. Deborah Alfaron has more from the White House. Early voting got underway in Texas Tuesday with lines wrapped around polling places. The county that includes Houston says it surpassed its record for first day early voting. I've been early voting at this location for 30 years and I have never seen a turnout like this. I've never even waited in line at this location for early voting. More than 3 million people have registered to vote there since the last presidential election, and that's given Democrats hope they can flip the Lone Star State. Former Vice President Joe Biden is also gunning for Florida, where President Trump won in 2016. Biden campaigned there today in small, socially distanced events, one where attendees sat in their cars and honked their approval. The longer Donald Trump remains president, the more reckless he becomes. 
Three more weeks before we end this madness. Before heading to Florida, former Vice President Biden mentioned President Obama. He says the former president is doing well and will be campaigning for the Democratic ticket soon. American. President Trump held his second rally in as many nights, the most recent in Pennsylvania, a state where CBS News finds he is trailing Biden and where he sharpened his attacks. Joe Biden would terminate our recovery, delay the vaccine, prolong the pandemic, Hundreds stood shoulder to shoulder and few wore masks. It's been eight days since the president was released from the hospital where he was being treated for coronavirus. Deborah Alferon, CBS News, the White House. Vice President Biden gave one of his most direct answers yet on whether he would add seats to the Supreme Court to offset a conservative majority. Speaking to a reporter in Ohio last night, Mr. Biden said that he is, quote, not a fan of court packing. Governor Gavin Newsom has reversed a parole board's decision to release the killer of a San Diego police officer. Jesus Cecina was convicted of the 1978 murder of Officer Archie Bugs, a crime Cecina committed when he was 17 years old. Bugs was shot four times after pulling Cecina over in the Skyline neighborhood. This is the second time the governor has reversed a parole board's recommendation for Cecina's release. The next parole board hearing for Cecina, who is now 59 years old, is set for December 2021. Sheriff's homicide detectives have identified four CHP officers and two San Diego police officers involved in a deadly shooting in Chula Vista. All six remain on administrative leave following the death of Christopher Ulmer. Detectives say Ulmer died of multiple gunshot wounds following a chase from Orange County into San Diego County on October 3rd. It is still unclear if Ulmer was armed when officers opened fire. Because both CHP and San Diego police officers were involved, the Sheriff's Department is handling the investigation. San Diego County will remain in the red tier for at least another week when it comes to the state's four-tier reopening plan. The county state calculated adjusted case rate is 6.8 daily infections per 100,000 residents. That's up from 3.7 last week. To stay in the less restrictive red tier, the county must maintain an adjusted case rate below 7. In-classroom learning is back in session for many elementary schools in the San Diego Unified School District. It's part of the district's Phase 1 plan in which only a limited number of students and teachers are allowed back on campus this week before more can return in the next phase. News 8's Heather Hope has a recap of Day 1. And yes, the excitement is on for getting kids back to school here at Lafayette. You don't see that many around today as it is a part of phase one. We're starting to get them back on campus in San Diego's largest school district. Jumping for joy, these Lafayette Elementary School students are elated to be back inside class. It's like first day of school on October 13th and we're getting all those fun pictures. The San Diego Unified School District opened up most elementary schools for its phase one. It's not about opening the fastest, it's about being the safest so that every step forward that we take in welcoming our kids back to in-person learning is a solid step forward. The district sent out video guides like this one to give parents their daily checklist before kids return to school like temperature checks. Lafayette will only have 25 students total on campus this week for appointment-based learning. It's the home of the district's deaf and hard of hearing program. These are truly students that need that uh, intensive support uh, that online learning isn't providing for them. Each classroom has a new and separate ventilation system, plexiglass dividers, and no shared desks. There will be A and B rotating student days. How do we maintain distance? How do we keep everybody safe? How can we make sure our students keep their masks on? No easy or cheap task. And there's a real cost to that. That's why we put $45 million aside in our coronavirus relief to be able to put these things in place. The school is adapting with providing outdoor classroom space for learning. Uh, it's largely deaf and hard of hearing students that are coming in for a couple of hours at a time. Um, some of the students will be here all week. Others will uh, rotate on different days. The schools reopened exactly seven months after they closed March 13th due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There's still pushback from parents who want all schools to open sooner. Of course, we understand that and we want to listen to the perspectives of all parents. School principal Ann McCarty says it's been her most difficult year yet. Unfortunately, we are also the school. We had a plane crash a couple years ago, so we've dealt with some challenges here. Lafayette is home to about 254 students in their TK to fifth grades. 
How will the San Diego Unified School District move up to phase two? We just are testing that out now so that we can continue to open more and more and more and go full scale. Again, this is phase one. The district will then monitor how well this goes in order to determine how they will move into the phase two to get more students and staff back on campus.